told me that when I'd start sailing, I wouldn't be able to keep my long hair because it would just get too ratty and sticky and gross, but I haven't found that to be the case at all. <laughs> Why do boys like to ask for directions? <laughs> this is the most we've walked in days. We've only been walking for five minutes. Um, is she hanging on my plat? Where, Where are you, Sonia? You want to tell the camera? Aww. Yay! Look, I got a lady beetle for you, Sonia. A couple of days ago, Josh and I and our mate Jack were hanging on the pick out at the reef. Five days without a soul in sight, bar the barracuda that hung around the boat for two days. Saltwater heals and inspires the human spirit. In saying that though, you put three people in an Adams 35 for a period of time without access to land and they're bound to come out of it either closer than ever or never to speak again. But we're on Maggie Island now and our friendship prospers just as the boulders do here. Join us for a goofy episode as we explore the island and find our land legs again. Got my full wheel drive mode on. <laughs> Gotta let some air out. <laughs> We've woken up in our anchorage this morning and it is so gorgeous. It's actually Father's Day today, so we've all spent the morning just talking to our families and um, letting them know that we're alive back from the reef, telling them of all our adventures. Turns out that Carlos the Spanish mackerel is actually a barracuda, <laughs> which is so gnarly. But it makes sense because he had a pretty funky set of jaws on him. Um, and barracudas have... Uh, Canines. Oh, I can't remember. I just read it in the book, but I can't remember. Anyways, they got funky teeth. So, what we're going to do this morning is we've got Horseshoe Bay around this point here. So, we're going to take the tender to land, ground ourselves, walk bare feet in the sand, um, smell some bush, and just kind of, yeah, recalibrate now that we're back on Earth again. Apparently, there's a really good bushwalk up on this point here. So, we don't have any, we don't have much internet this morning, so we haven't been able to look at the maps and see what paths we can take, but we'll just work it out when we get there. That's what we always do. And we always find something really exciting anyway. So, yeah. Okay. Look, this looks like an old track. It is like a little track. Huh? Yeah, look, here we go. And we're just trying to find a path from this bay, because most of the people that are here, well, pretty much all the people that are here have accessed it from a little power boat or a little tender. So we, we just, well, <laughs> I asked a fella how to get here. Why don't boys like to ask for directions? I don't get it, anyways. <laughs> what? what? You about to find your own way, you don't need we any help. We were going. We're men! We can feel it in our loins! Both the boys are wearing shoes, apparently it's a 40 minute walk. <laughs> we'll be right, won't we, Sonia? Girls don't need shoes. Swamp. swamp! We are in the swamp. Just make sure you're looking down at the trail. Jack, for black snakes and or brown snakes. You got your stomp on? Bush eyes. <laughs> Bush eyes, yeah. Do you want to take a guess as to what awe-inspiring sights stop these two electricians in their tracks? Is that you, Yeah, universal Is that what you're looking at? Oh. How long is scrap on there? This is so cool. Yeah, the track's all right, Phoebe, but this power distribution pole is just better. In centuries to come, will scientists have discovered why electrical engineering is just so breathtaking for young men in the trade? Who knows? For now, all we can do is wonder. Horseshoe Bay 1.8, okay. Great, so we'll get to see three bays on this walk. Radical, balding, horseshoe. Maybe we'll skip balding, hey Josh? <laughs> Coming up to Boulder Bay. Balding, whoops. Got mixed up because there's just so many boulders here. <laughs> Boulder Bay. <laughs> Exhibit A. Um, is she hanging on my plat? Where is she? Where are you, Sonia? You want to tell the camera? Aww. She's on the shoes. That's cute. I'll just turn this around. Yay! Look, I got a lady beetle for you, Sonia. Look, what's this? 
Oh, that's a tall one though. Look at all these ones. Oh, green coconuts too. Yeah. Oh, hang on, Zonia. Wow, this is gorgeous. What a radical bay. That's what this is, it's not Balding Bay, Radical Bay. After some much needed rest, we continued the walk to Horseshoe. Sonia got sick of being carried around and demanded that she has her autonomy. So instead of carrying her on my shoulder, I carried her in a bucket hat. And she was pleased with this parade of independence. A lizard's logic is not far from a toddler's logic sometimes. And much like a toddler, she was sleeping for most of the way right up until we arrived. That's this so tiny little nest. Can you put the GoPro up there, Joshy? Oh, knock knock. Have you considered solar? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go for a walk at the top of one of these peaks here. We're actually not sure where we're going, but that's the fun part. It was Father's Day yesterday, and there was a live band at the Surf Life Saving Club, so there was heaps of people here. It was very rowdy. Um, but yeah, it seems that everyone's feeling a little bit ill this morning, and they're having it slow or still in their beds. But that's perfect for us, because it means that we get an absolutely deserted view, which is probably quite rare for Magnetic Island. This is going to be our last day on Maggie Island with Jack. We're dropping him back to Townsville this afternoon and he's flying out tomorrow and then our friends Macca and Jazz and their baby girl Devorah are going to be um, coming over with us on the boat. We haven't filled up on water since Airlie Beach though so we had a look on Zulu, had a look on Avionics and we can't see where there are any free fill up stations. But a fella named Mike Harris got in contact with us on our YouTube and he said if you ever find your way up at Magnetic Island Marina let us know we can sort you out. So we got in contact with Mike and he said that we can come into the marina, fill up on water, give the boat a wash down. We are so excited and so grateful to have a berth um, just to do all those things because we were otherwise going to have to bring all the jerry cans to land and do runs back and forth to the boat and it takes about four runs for us to fill up both the forward tank and the bladder as well as the jerry can so yeah that's massive help <laughs> oh i hate vlogging in public <laughs> you can't really see but there's red-tailed cockies up there we heard them flying over a couple of days ago but we couldn't really see them all oh, yesterday well, the we thought they sound like incredible so far i saw a, a blue blue winged kookaburra and now red-tailed black cockatoos that's that's two we're going to mark off in the book. Huh. Mm. Funky oh, little dinosaurs. Yellow there with them too. A yellow tail. Oh, see? Yeah. Or maybe it's a juvenile. Oh yeah, maybe it's a juvenile. Maybe that's mummy and daddy. That's a big mango tree. Really? Yeah. Look, there's mangoes up there. Oh, there's mangoes. Oh. <laughs> Not ready yet, Ooh. but... That is popping. We could see how um, green they are and we could make a green mango salad, like a Thai mango. Oh my god. Oh, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty rock solid. Yeah. This is good. huge. That's the biggest mango tree I've ever seen. Yeah, likewise. Frangipani tree, not flowering yet, but the flora and fauna on this island yeah, is so tough. impressive. Wow! Like the northern facing side is pretty, pretty rugged, but this side is really um green and yeah, green. <laughs> well, well said. Oh, I love this walk. Wow! Look at this rock face. Whoa! All the staining from the rain. Wow. 
Shadow of the cloud on the water. Looks like a reef. Oh, and there's where we were last night. There's nomads or um, yeah. X base. Yeah. It feels so good to be moving our bodies again. What? 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 Are you talking to me? No. Oh. It's um. I think I've told you this before, but it was so surprising for me how little we actually move our bodies when you live in on a boat because it's obviously such a small space. And like when we used to live in a house and you know, like cleaning day, like once a week when I do a big clean day, like that was like exercise for me because I'd be walking up and down stairs and cleaning floors. And now when I do cleaning day, which is every day on the boat for like four minutes, <laughs> and all I have to do is take maybe eight steps. And then I'm done. <laughs> but yeah, apart from that, you don't really do much movement. And unless you actively go outside and decide that you're going to do some exercise, you just don't. <laughs> I guess walking is one of our, um, is something that we will try to do a little bit regularly. But when we're at the reef and stuff like that, you're not really walking, you're swimming and stuff. Um, it's just still pretty tiring. But anyway, I digress. It's just really, really enjoyable walking and smelling nature smelling Australian bush I haven't smelt many other bushes <laughs> apart from the Canadian forest which is also really beautiful but there's nothing sweeter and drier and saltier than Australian bush I had to swim off the back of the boat it was a bit sketchy because I saw a couple sharks at the top of the hill but I just went for a quick dip booty dip and then jumped in just finished making some bread and pulling into the um, Magnetic Island Marina now. Are you Mike? Hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> It's a bit moist, but we got. Oh, it looks so bad on camera. <laughs> Homemade bread and brew and rhubarb, salsa, sandwiches, all that jazz. We're watching the fourth day of early um, <laughs> Magnetic Island Race Week. It's on right now as we speak. Yeah. I was coming out of the marina, and just as I started coming out, two, I looked up and there were two ferries there about to come in. Like far out, I've already started now, so I gassed it and one of them had to do a U-turn and they both went to me and I was like, right, so I obviously need to give way to ferries to the yeah. give way to vessels entering the hub, I think. Especially with no sails up, we got no right of way at all. Oh. We're all anchored in Townsville Duck Pond. The water bladder has been potentially carrying on a little bit and leaking, so we've got Jack on the job of um puncture repair. He always used to fix punctures in my bike tires so I know that he's more than capable to um, get it happening on our spare bladder. We think it's leaking because we the bilge alarm went off or the bilge pump went off last night and then Josh tasted it and it was fresh water so that's why we're doing that. And just getting uh, the last of our money's worth out of this yeah. really, really capable, practical young man we've got here. <laughs> He's not allowed to come out of the sun until he fixes it. <laughs> So that's like, go red. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just using a little bike, bike puncture repair kit, and if I have to, I'll spend the money to get something a little bit better. So what's the idea? You're gonna clamp by this? I'm gonna get put something a block rigid. on the bottom, block on the top, get our patch on there, put it over like that, squeeze it, maybe a little bit of paper towel to go over that so the glue doesn't yep. stick to this. Great idea. So you gotta let the the you want to let them go tacky, do yeah, you? Yeah. Just bonds better. So Jack is off. We've motored back to Magnetic Island. We were going to put the head still up, but I just did reprovisioning, and stuff was everywhere, and didn't want it all to go flying because um, it was going to be the last one that we reprovisioned for a little while. Josh has just picked up our friends Maka and Jazz and their baby girl Devora. So yeah, pretty exciting. But I just saw the reunion. <laughs> lots of hugs, lots of squeals.
We're well, heading over to Horseshoe Bay tomorrow, most likely. We're the last two boats in the anchorage. The nor'easterly is kind of whipping some swell up that goes into the bay, so it's a little bit more rolly than it was last few days. Yeah, I guess that's the main reason. We love this spot otherwise. Yeah, I don't really want to leave, to be honest. But we're just admiring these beautiful trees, fig trees, I believe. I believe. I believe. But they're just braiding down into the ground. Looking funny. Too. Absolutely gorgeous. Have we told them the story of the fig tree that we went to try and find at Wilson's Creek? Have we told them that yet? <laughs> so before I moved into Josh's place, there was another fellow there, Zaid. He told us about this beautiful, massive fig tree out in the middle of nowhere, pretty much, in a place called Wilson's Creek. And I had a gorgeous creek there like a really beautiful waterfall but it's this massive tree and that was right up josh and i's alley so we we're like give us the directions he like wrote it down on this piece of paper it was the most elusive directions it was like find the fork in the road find the boulder with the fern on it go around that boulder you'll see two trees and we're ready this we're, we're like dude this is gonna be so hard but we'll do it anyway so he took josh's forerunner out there pumped some tunes in the 4b and it used to be a walking track and then they abandoned it again guess because there was all these like old signs everywhere mm. anyway we found this fig tree and we were just honestly a bit speechless for a time because it was, it was just a, it was in a forest too so it wasn't like a typical widespread fig tree it was a tall growing yeah and well, it was just we expected I don't, know, to the top of it. I don't know what i was expecting i we bought a hammock we brought arts and crafts because i in my mind's eye i pictured that it would be this field with a big fig tree and we could hang the hammock under the fig tree and then there's a creek like a waterfall alongside it like that's what i envisioned no this was dense forest ow, ow. ow. this was dense forest we really needed a machete to get through there no nah, we wouldn't machete the trees but no hammock was hung let me tell you and we were just lying on this big fig tree lying on the tree trunks the tree trunks were tell them babe we were going up the creek and we we're carrying a big backpack and it was the it was already 2 p.m. and I was like we need to put all our stuff down and just go on foot if we're gonna try and find this thing because we're we're not gonna have enough time to go and get back again so we ended up in the middle where the creek kind of divided into a split which is one of the marks uh, that we were told about we left all our stuff we ventured on foot we found the point where he said you have to then start walking up the hill to find the tree and it was the middle of the jungle like it was so gnarly so Just dense vines and, and <laughs> and we somehow walked through this bush for 300 meters ended up finding this humongous fig tree that you couldn't see the top of saw it and then gave it a bit of a cuddle and then we had to leave to go back because yeah. by the time we got back to the car it, it the dark. sun was set and yeah and we yeah it was, we didn't tell anyone we were going out there <laughs> but this okay so this is a good i reckon this is how wide the fig tree was yeah. am i exaggerating no no, not at all. But that wasn't the trunk, it was the trunks. You know how fig trees have like these arms that come out? Ended up pitching up the hammock, finding a nice hammock spot. This was our first sleep in a hammock together. And we were so excited because it was right next to a little creek and we were excited to go for a swim in the creek in the morning. And so, so, so we hung the hammock between two trees and we also brought our form person tent that we set up, but we just didn't put the fly on it. So we set the hammock up so it would run through the tent so we were sleeping in the tent but on a hammock so we had mosquito protection and there were a lot of mozzies there was dude a lot of mozzies. so when, many mozzies when we woke, it's all you could hear we went to bed both of us in this not even like just a normal sort of cotton fabric like single person hammock when we woke up two hours after we went to sleep we both woke up in this fit we were, our backs were so sore we both woke up at the same time we we're like this is <laughs> we need to get out of here and that was that was a better sleep than a lot of our sleeps on the um, boat, boat event. <laughs> yeah if only we knew it so was, was just, just preparing us, us. but then we woke up had a cacao went for a nudie swim saw that lobster no a crayfish do you remember no, that it wasn't a cray it was a um yabby oh okay yabby. it was a really beautiful yabby and it was blue that was gorgeous <laughs> Anyways. It was very special. Okay. Well, this rock's really nice and warm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, these boulders. If if I could use one word to describe Magnetic Island, boulders. <laughs> That's a nice boulder. <laughs> That's a nice boulder. It's got a nice little hat on it.
That's a nice boulder. That's a nice boulder. Right, Little toupee we... boulder. <laughs>